This has the STLs from Nomad Sculpt. I'm gonna stick this in my Anacubic Photon M3 Premium Resin Printer, and I'm gonna record everything so you can see the steps from Nomad Sculpt to Lychee Slicer, Slicer to Resin Printer, and then to hopefully printed 3D characters. Three, two, one, go. So first things first, it's daytime. So my printer here is covered. I have a black curtain. I have a trash bag over it, and then I have a black curtain over that. And of course I have my mask up here. I have these heavy black curtains. I'm gonna cover all the windows. I have another one that's gonna cover this window because I don't want any light coming in. And then we're gonna turn on the lights, this light here, and then we can get started with the printing process. All right, so now I have to cover the door with this. I don't have a studio, I work in my room, and yes, I'm in my sweats. So these curtains I just got from Amazon. I think they're photography background curtains, uh, but pretty cheap. Got them from Amazon, uh, and those are blackout curtains for the big windows. All right, we're set. Man, I wish I had a studio. So the reason I have so many covers on the printer um, is mostly because the resin really, really smells. Uh, and I'm also working in the room where I sleep. So I definitely want to keep everything contained. So I got an extra large trash bag and I got these photo tarps, blackout tarps from Amazon. Okay, so printer is free. I need to check the resin and stir the resin. And then I also need to uh, insert the files. So I'm using Anacubic Photon M3 Premium resin printer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So I'm just gonna insert the thumb drive. I'm sure I'll do it the wrong way first. I always do. But before I get to printing, I have to uh, deal with the resin. I'm gonna put my mask on. So uh, I'm gonna have to do some voiceovers. So before I open up the printer and this resin smell starts emanating through the room and all this stuff, you wanna make sure you have everything ready that you might need. So I have my little table here. I'm gonna go outside in the backyard and get my uh, little plastic tray. Uh, make sure you have paper towels, make sure you have cleaning stuff, make sure you have rubber gloves, um, all the stuff that you're gonna need because once this stuff opens, you wanna get everything done as quickly as can so you can put the top back on uh, just to keep the fumes down. I do have a fan behind me that can expel the air from the room. Uh, it's not the greatest, but it's better than nothing. I'm gonna turn that on. But you wanna be absolutely ready once you take the cover off and once you start dealing with resin. Okay. So thankfully I have, you know, easy access to the backyard. Uh, I keep a lot of the, a lot of the things that get really uh, heavy with the smell of resin. I keep those in the backyard in this crate that I got from Home Depot. Uh, this is my little garbage that I use for when I'm doing all the stuff inside. I can just put the plastic inside uh, this canister. That way the smell just, it just tries to keep the smell down as much as possible. Uh, and then I bring it in. I have my little tray that I got from Amazon as well. Uh, I need to put a little garbage bag in there. Uh, everything is just to keep everything clean. So I have a place to put like the soiled paper towels. Anytime I clean anything, I put it in there. Uh, unfortunately, I use a lot of paper towels, a lot of like, uh, because I'm constantly cleaning things uh, because I want to keep my workspace clean and my hands clean and all the tools clean as well. So this is the plastic spatula that I'm going to use to mix up the resin because it's been sitting for probably about a month, a month and a half. So my resin sits for sometimes months at a time. I keep it uh, covered with the plastic bag and the tarp and everything else. So it's pretty good. These are the nitro gloves that I got from Amazon, 100 count. I think these are a size large. I like them nice and tight fitting. There, come on. There we go. Okay, so you have to check the resin. These are very interesting. The resin is actually a really light gray. I wanna have this on hand too, so when I take this out, I can just put it right here. So I always have lots of paper towels within arm's reach, and I always have 99% isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle so that I can clean things. It's very important to stir the resin because as you can see, the resin is a light gray, but it's been sitting, so different parts of it settle so you definitely want to make sure that you stir it up also make sure that there's no cured resin like stuck to the bottom or anything like that 
So now I'm bringing it over to my little table. I clean it with the inside and then I'm just gonna spray it with the isopropyl alcohol and just do another once over on the little spatula, the little plastic spatula, just to kind of clean it. This not only cleans it, but it keeps it from smelling because the smell can be very, very strong. And then I just get rid of the paper towels in the canister. I always put any paper towels that I use to clean anything inside the canister. So it keeps my room from really starting to smell. I'm gonna go back, go all the way back, print. And then I have to scroll down here and find Lucky. Okay, so there's Lucky Slice. All right, and so then I press play. Then this thing comes down and it presses down. And right now it's pressed to the bottom of the FEP with like a thin layer of, uh, of resin. And then it's gonna eventually come back up and go back down. And it's gonna continue to do that for the duration. Five hours and four minutes, so it's gonna be a while. So this process does take a very, very long time. Uh, but luckily I'm gonna make a, another crash course with Nomad to kind of kill that time and I just do other things and it's it's nice to do it when I can leave when I can have the door open uh, so it's really it's really not that bad you get used to kind of setting it and then leaving it because you know it's gonna take a while that's pretty much the process of getting everything to the printer and getting getting everything set up and the reason why I wanted to go through that is because I don't really see the tricky like the little things especially if you're just starting out there's all these little things that you should set up, like the way I set up my table and things like that. All of those are from many disasters and you sort of figure out how to get in your flow. Everyone's space is different. Most, most of you probably have more space, probably aren't printing in your bedroom, but you got to do what you got to do. I don't print all the time because I just really don't like being in here when it's printing. It doesn't smell too bad now, uh, thanks to the garbage bag and the the cover over it my fiance also i know later on when she comes home she'll she smells everything so if i even if i stop printing and have everything cleaned up she comes home like a few hours later she'll still smell it so i'll still be in trouble when we come back i'll show you how i set up my table and set everything up for post 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 processing and that's when it really stinks everything is on a timeline again it probably won't be dark then it's a little easier when it's dark out then i can go in and outside of my room but when it's not dark out, then I can't go in and out. So I just have to do what you got to do.